Good morning, morning. and welcome to Norwood United Methodist Church. Whether you are visiting this morning or you attend here regularly, we welcome you. And as we begin today's service, we encourage you to prepare your hearts to worship the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us, for this day that you have made. We thank you for each person that you have brought here this morning. As we prepare to begin the service, uh, we pray that you would direct our hearts and minds to yourself. Help us to give you the praise that you are worthy of. Help us to worship you with our whole hearts. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now please stand as able for our first song, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Let's give God a round of praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We want to see you. We want to see you. Uh, join with me now in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I'm going to call Bill up. Uh, if you could remain standing for the offering. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, we have a box at the door on each side when you come in or when you're gone. If you want to leave your offering there, that would be great. And uh, I have a offertory prayer I would like to say. Father in heaven, who is good enough? Last week we heard the parable of the prodigal son. The prodigal son knew he wasn't good enough. You saw past the sin, and you found a child of God whom you dearly loved, whom you wanted back. Before we can say, I'm sorry, you say, I forgive you. You make not good enough into a celebration of great joy. That kind of love is incomprehensible to me, but this is your kind of love. Let us give thanks for your kind of love and all that we offer back to you, Lord, in our offering and ministries we support through this church. And Father, please guide us and help us to act in accordance with your will with all those that we interact with this coming week. And all these things we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if you could join me in the doxology. <laughs> God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy For announcements, uh, we have Bible study. We still want to invite you to 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights, uh, right behind All Ages Welcome. Uh, we are still going through Luke, but you're welcome to jump right in. Um, does anyone want to give a report back for the, uh, the bingo? I heard it was a lot of fun. That can be the announcement if no one wants to. Yes. Wonderful. So that was a fundraiser that happened yesterday. Um, thank you. Thank you, Anna. It seems like uh, it was a lot of fun, so that's good. Um, anyone else have announcements for us? Yes. Amen. So 8.30 down in the, um, in the social hall, um, come for breakfast and for Bev Richards, and uh, just to enjoy each other. Wonderful. Uh, anybody else? Yes. Got you. Last day to place orders for the flowers. Do they, how do they order it? How do we order it? It'll be right here, so if you're interested, uh, this is your last day to fill this out. All right, anybody else? Uh, we do have Holy Week coming on Thursday. We'll be here um, hosting a few other people uh, down in the social hall at 7 o'clock. 
for Holy Thursday. Uh, Friday, we're going to be um, gathering in the parking lot at 1130 in the day to go over for a Good Friday service. And then Sunday is Easter Sunday. All right. Amen. Let's hear now from the reading of the word. This morning's scripture reading comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 16 through 21, and can be found on page 1127 of your pew Bibles if you'd like to follow along using those. This is what the Lord says, He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. The animals, the wild animals, honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the desert and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. This is the word of the Lord. A new thing, no word United Methodist, a new thing. Wonderful. We serve a God that, that creates, um, creates new among us, that is the creator. Um, my favorite part of the service is to hear about what's going on, what new things are happening in your life. Uh, so it can be something that you want to celebrate with your family or something you want to, you know, pray about. What do you guys have this week? Um, what's your husband's name again? Fred. Fred. Um, I want to honor the 40-year mark. I think that's a beautiful anniversary. Um, so even though it's a, it, this is a sad time, um, I want to just say congratulations for, for all that time. Uh, and we're praying for, we know Fred is uh, held by God now, but that doesn't make it any easier uh, for Amen. Amen. So we'll continue to pray for Fred and, and for your family. Thank you for lifting that up for us. Amen. Uh, anybody else? Yeah. Cindy. Oh, praise God. That's awesome. Uh, so Jen's company is donating two tractor trailer fulls of medical supplies to the Ukraine. Praise God. That's awesome. Um, Anna. Amen. So, uh, Karen is having a uh, knee replacement uh, surgery on Tuesday. Yep. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? One more? Yeah. Yeah, that's hard. Okay, so Cousin Judy is in the ICU for heart surgery. Not sure if we can make it, um, but we're praying for her. Judy, thank you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would rain down on us your love, your mercy, God. We need your mercy uh, and your comfort, God. Uh, we are praying for... Judy, Lord, in the ICU, we pray for her heart uh, to be strong. Pray for her mind to be at peace, God. 
We pray that she would feel you standing next to her hospital bed, Jesus, as if, um, yeah, a physical presence in the room, God. Uh, and we just pray for, for Judy just to, just to be well and, and to have peace of mind, God. Lord, we pray for Karen on Tuesday uh, for her knee surgery. Um, we just ask that it would go well, that you would guard, guide the hand of the surgeon um, and that you would, be, you would be there, God. Please, Lord, bring her through it uh, healthy and, and strong. Lord, we thank you for um, Jen's company donating the medical supplies uh, to, the UK, uh, to, the, to the Ukraine. We just ask that more and more uh, relief would be given, supplies would be given, healing uh, would happen, uh, and bloodshed would stop, God. Thank you, God. Lord, um, we thank you, God, for Fred, that he's smiling down on us now. Um, but we just ask that you would, um, well, we would ask that you would hold a, uh, an anniversary celebration up there for him. Um, we ask that you would help us uh, as we grieve it as a, you know, as, as his spouse and as a family, as a church family, we just ask that you would help us, um, help us do something with this pain, God. Um, we need you to take it, Lord. Please, God, take it, hold it for us. It's too heavy for us, but we thank you that you, um, that your burden is light, God, and, and we just give it to you. We thank you for uh, his life and who he is. In Jesus' name, um, everything that we haven't said, we, we pray for as well. Um, let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Uh, I'd like to invite you now um, to the second hymn, Second Hymn, You Are My King. You're welcome to stay seated and, and just contemplate this um, as the praise band comes up. Prepare your hearts um, to really, you can whisper it, you can sing it, uh, but we're asking that you say it directly to God. Uh, you can close your eyes, forget that we're in the room, uh, sing this one directly to God.
Our second scripture reading is John chapter 12, verse 1 through 8. Jesus anointed at Bethany. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. When Mary took a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was a year's worth of wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This scripture that Bill just read takes place just a week before they kill Jesus. Just a week, a few days. What would you do if you knew you only had one week to live? Would you book the quickest flight to Puerto Rico or an island? Would you mourn? Would you, would you spend a few days in bed crying? How do you get ready for death? I just talked to a friend of mine who's a chaplain in a hospital. She said that everybody dies, but not everybody dies well. In her experience, the people she's seen at peace at the end, with their families nearby, grieving but standing strong, those are the people that prepared their families beforehand, prepared their families for their leaving. But how do you prepare for such a thing? Jesus teaches us today how to prepare for death. With less than a week to live, Jesus gathers loved ones and goes to a dinner in his honor. A beautiful, beautiful family dinner with friends. And it doesn't say in the text, but I imagine that his mother and his family is there. The text does say that his dear friend Lazarus is there, and Martha and Mary are all at this table. I imagine it's, it's a bounty. It's, we keep getting table references in the scripture. I imagine there's, it's laid out with such good food. Who would you invite to your going away dinner? Lazarus um, is the one that Jesus is with. Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. We know Lazarus. Um, Lazarus was the one that he brought back from the dead, and it meant a lot that he did that. Jesus has always had a target on the back of his back, but when he found out that Lazarus was, was sick, when Mary came to him and wet his feet with her tears, begging, Lord, if you would have been there, my brother would not have died. My brother Lazarus would not have died if he would have been there. Jesus offered his life in place for Lazarus's. He went to Lazarus. In a loud voice, he crawled out to the tomb. Lazarus, come out. Come out. And everybody heard him. Lazarus heard him and, and came out and, and came back from the dead. But also, Jesus' enemies heard him. This happened very close to Jerusalem. Crowds were there. 
This couldn't be ignored. This person, this rabble rouser, just brought someone back from the dead. It was a big deal, and Jesus' enemies said, if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And then they were worried about leaving, losing their nation to the Romans. So Lazarus was actually kind of the final straw, uh, if you look at John. The final straw, how dare he raise someone from the dead this close to Jerusalem, this close to the place of power? Who does he think he is? Now, those who had been wondering if they could just ignore Jesus, now they know we can't just ignore this guy. He has to be killed. He has to be silenced. And is Jesus upset that he's just given his life for Lazarus? No. He's rejoicing that Lazarus is alive and will have life after death. So Jesus brings Lazarus to the table. He brings him in to the big banquet feast to have a goodbye dinner with Lazarus. I think Jesus brings Lazarus to the table maybe to remind himself what he's going to suffer, what it's all for, to save people from death, to bring them through it so that it's not the final say. I also think Jesus brings Lazarus and uh, Martha and Mary to the table so he can fill up on his own love tank. Jesus knows that what he's about to go through is not going to be easy. So he needs people that really love him around him. Lazarus' sister Mary pours love out on Jesus. Literally pours love out on his feet. John 12 verse 3 says, Mary took a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped it with her hair. And the house was filled, filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Can you see this incredible act? Jesus sitting there at the table, Mary pouring out this expensive, expensive perfume all over his feet, wiping it with his hair. Just an act of love. Can you smell the perfume filling the room, mixing with the good smells of the food, but filling the room in an expensive, beautiful, holy aroma. What an act of love. And Jesus, Jesus needed every drop. Earlier, Mary had put her tears on Jesus' feet, but Jesus had done wonderful things for her and for her brother Lazarus. Jesus had defeated death already for her and her family. And her tears, her tears had turned into perfume. Her tears had turned into perfume which she now spread with her own hair on Jesus' feet. Look how much she loves him. Well, the disciples protest. There's always someone that's going to be protesting. And maybe they protest because they're embarrassed. It's kind of embarrassing to, to sit there and watch someone pour perfume and, and then wipe it with their hair on someone's feet, too. What, what is this? It's, it's kind of a ridiculous thing. It's kind of embarrassing. Maybe they're protesting also because they're greedy. You know, we could have given that to the poor or took a little bit off the top. They, they don't quite understand it. But Jesus says, leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. Maybe after seeing her own brother came back from the dead, she realizes this perfume is probably going to be better used right now to show Jesus how much she loves him. She's not going to wait until his body's in the ground because she's not even sure anymore if, if bodies stay dead. So she's going to use it now on his feet. I'm not sure why Mary pours out love like this, but Jesus knows, and he knows how much he needs it right now. He's treasuring every drop. He's letting it happen. He's enjoying his feet being anointed. Because when he's hanging on the cross, he's going to need to know how much people loved him. He's going to need to know how people did care about him and loved him. And God is going to give him strength. He is God hanging on the cross. But this love, this love is also going to give him strength. 
Maybe while he's on the cross, maybe his feet still smell like perfume. I don't know how many days it took for that smell to wear off. Jesus prepares his loved ones for his death and prepares himself as well. And so, what can we learn from this? What's the lesson? Well, he creates a beautiful time with them, a time to just be together, pouring out and receiving love. He prepares himself to die by accepting Mary's layers of love. And maybe we should too. Maybe we should think about how we can layer on God's love and the love of each other. How do you prepare yourself and your loved ones for death? How do you prepare for a cold time, for the unknown, for something that is coming, but you don't know how or when? When my mom knew that it might get cold, she would take me to the coat room before school and put layer after layer on me. First, she'd pull a hoodie over my head. Then over that, a hand-knit sweater she had made. And over that, a winter jacket. I would sometimes protest, Mom, this is too many layers. She would say, if you need to, you can take them off and tie them around your waist. But when you need them again, when it gets cold, you can put them on again. Layer after layer, you'll get warmer and warmer. It'll be like I'm hugging you, because I want you to be prepared. I want you to be prepared. Well, Norwood United Methodists, God is preparing you and me with layers of love every day we live. God is whispering into our ear, like my mother, I love you. You are my beloved child. I am proud of you. I will love and take care of you. The scripture, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing. Or God saying, I will never leave you or forsake you. Never. God is saying, when you face death, I will be with you. I have gone before you and defeated it. I will bring you through it into life with me. God is also showing us how to prepare each other. I know I can't prevent bad things from happening in my life or the life of my daughter or the life of my friend, but Jesus teaches me today, I can treasure the moments I have today. I can prepare a table and eat with the ones I love. Moment after moment, I can layer love on them. Creating love memories, someday they'll pour out Someday they'll take off and put on when it's cold. Oh yeah, remember when he did this? So what's our assignment? First as always, it's to receive God's gift of love, freely given. You don't have to get better like the prodigal son. You don't have to um, completely change or, or say everything you had meant to say. God is offering you love now as you are just because you are God's beloved child. So our first assignment is to receive God's love because when we love ourselves, when we feel God's love, then we're able to love others. In a minute, we have communion. Um, and during this communion, think about this communion as a way of putting God's love on you, layer after layer. Put on the memory that he gave his body for us. Put on the memory that he spilled his, his blood for us. Put it on like a coat, like a layer of love. Put on the memory that life does not end in death. Death does not have the final sting. It ends in resurrection. It ends in being with Jesus forever. Praise God. Just because Jesus loves you and wants to spend time with you, now you will not stop when you die. You'll be with Christ. After you receive your bread and wine, if you want, you can hold out your hand. This doesn't usually happen, but I'm offering this to you. Hold out your hand, and I'll put some perfume on it. I have a little bit of, I believe it's rose. It smells nice for, for everyone. Hold out your hand, and I'll put a little bit of this on your hand. And when you smell it, you can think of the scripture, Joel 2.28, 
in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. You can think of this woman who, who poured out her love to Jesus. You can smell it and remember how much Jesus loves you. How God has poured out that same spirit that was on Jesus upon you just because God loves you. When you face the hardest thing in your life, God's love will still be right there layering you up against the cold and as close to you as perfume on skin. Lastly, after the communion and the perfume anointing, you are welcome to pick up one of these. I've made a bunch of living wills as a way, uh, you can take your time, it's only two pages, uh, as a way to think about preparing your family. Uh, someday, hopefully in like 50 or 60 years or 20 years, whenever it is. Um, someday you may or may not be able to tell people what you want in the hospital. And this is a nice way to say, to take the pressure off of them. Uh, it's an act of love to say, you know what, you don't have to worry about the right thing or you know, what, I, what would I have wanted. I wrote it down, here it is. So it's a way of preparing each other um, for, for, for the transition, right? Not for the end, but for the transition. So you're welcome to take that um, after you get your perfume if you want it. We are not cold, Norwood United Methodist. We are not afraid. We have the keys to the kingdom. We have Jesus' love wrapped layer after layer around us. And we spend the days that we have here anointed with that same spirit upon us wrapping other people as best we can in God's love, wrapping ourselves and preparing us all for cold days with warm, warm layers. Let it be known that we are ready when it comes because death does not have the final say. Christ does. Jesus has prepared us with everlasting love. So now let us prepare ourselves to receive it. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You're right. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and forever, to give thanks to God. Creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, when righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation would not lift up sword against nation anymore, Neither would anyone learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and even ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to the church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted Jesus to sit and reign with you at your right hand. I'm going to ask those um, serving communion to come now.
And so on the night which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. And giving thanks to the Lord, Jesus broke it. He offered it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which was broken for you. As often as you eat of this, remember me. Likewise, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, and offered it to his disciples, saying, this cup is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. The bread and the cup are made ready. All that's missing is you. If you're able, please, one by one, come to the aisle. If you'd like to receive it in your seat, just raise your hand. Sisters and brothers, this is the love of Christ given for you. Layer it on.
Has anyone missed the communion and would like to get it? Raise your hand. All right. Our final song, uh, the praise band could come up. Let's sing our final song and then we'll receive the benediction. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let them hear the set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hand. For I will always sing of when your love came down. I can sing of your love your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healers set me free. I'm happy to be in the I will daily lift my head, for I will always sing of when your love came down. I can sing of your love forever. 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 I know, but when the world has seen the light, they will dance with joy like we're dancing now. I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love. receive the benediction. Sisters and brothers, you will sing of God's love forever because God has for you life everlasting. So rejoice no matter what you face this week. It is small because God's love is so big for you that it even brings you through death. We thank you, God, that you have given us life, that you have prepared a table for us. Thank you, Jesus. Now go in peace. Amen.